Hey, it's time for the happy hour. How we doing? Good to see you. Hey, we're back. Thanks for coming coming to see us. Uh, we didn't have the intro music, so we are... Uh, A little Yacht Rock. You want to tag? No, you already name? tagged. Okay. Yeah, so you're already there. Good, good. Oh, yeah. I mean... Shuffle it, baby. Let's uh, see. Of course, we get a, a commercial. Man. But anyway. Man. Terrible, so right? Beautiful Man. week. Beautiful well, week. It's had, well, it hadn't been that beautiful. The U.S. Open's here in Birmingham. Right. It is. Well, women's. Does that U count? Women's U.S. Open. That counts. Because yeah. they're good. Yeah. Oh, they're very good. I mean, it's been raining all week. And uh, raining. Out. Hey, did you hear the Mark story? Mark Carlisle's tuned in. Mark Carlisle. How are you? Anyway, one of the great stories I, I heard. Cassie Mangles uh, in. Was that uh, with all the rain, the defending champion of the U.S. Open went down to Top Golf, your place? Isn't that funny? Nuts, because they couldn't get on the course. So she figured, hey, why not aim a bunch of donuts out there and hit the colors? Exactly. Uh, exactly. So yeah, oh, so Benny and the Jets, man. But listen, today we've got uh, we've got five secrets that self-made millionaires teach their kids. We've got uh, some stock picks. We're going to talk about interest rates and how why they're coming down right now. Uh, so we got a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, hey, our, our boy from the land, as y'all called it. Y'all taught me the Cleveland. land. Cleveland. Cleveland. Yes. Uh, he is in the house. Best photographer in all of the land. Uh, anyway, hey, uh, one thing is, now I want to get into the funny, right? Now, Cleveland has earned this right before, but did you hear the crazy story that Birmingham, now we can't even get the Kiwanis Club convention to come very often. Or the Rotary Club to have their annual convention. But by golly, Birmingham wants to spend another quarter of a million dollars getting the Democratic National Convention to Birmingham. Hey, you never know. I mean, uh, it sounds like a long shot, the way you put it. I mean, you're really not selling it very well like we're going to get it. But oh, I mean, it's, still, it's still a good effort. It is funny. that they, they, they think it's the thing. I mean... we got the Alabama Hammer on here. The Alabama sure. Hammer's back. Uh, anyway, uh, Groupon, man, saw a great deal on Groupon. By the way, if you're not a member of Costco, this is not sponsored, by the way. But great deal on, if you're not a member of Costco, because everybody knows I'm cheap and I love Costco. Sixty on Groupon right now, sixty dollars you pay, which is a normal rate. They'll give you a twenty dollar gift card, a twenty dollar seventy two thing of batteries. It costs twenty dollars. Ten dollars off of fresh meat. I don't like the term fresh meat, by the way. Uh, Two hundred and fifty dollar orders will give you twenty five dollars. But a great deal. You will get a lot back. It's not. It'll take off defray that cost. Uh, well, that's for, for the Groupon. That's that's on Groupon right now. Twenty dollar gift card, free pack of seventy two batter double A batteries. That's a twenty dollar value, and then ten dollars off fresh meat. Ten dollars off fresh meat, but the the rotten old meat is same price. Yeah, that's same right. Price. Gelman, how are you? St. Louis, one of the smart guys in our industry. We got a little. Uh, uh, I, I know we. I know I'm kind of partial to the line of Kugels, but this is a grapefruit <laughs> yeah. shandy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day they'll watch that. and we'll get sponsored by Lining Kugel. Grapefruit. I, I do like this. This grapefruit. Yeah, although, it does have a, good, a pretty good taste to it. Although, I know my friend Mark Gelman's going to be like, hey, it's not Budweiser. Because, you know, St. Louis, <coughs> you know. Well, you know, and, and we... I don't think I don't think it's Anheuser-Busch, is it? I just got no. Dad on the Facebook, uh, my, my father on Facebook, last week or so, yeah. just for this. So I'm not sure he's not on here yet. So Pops is uh, there. Well, I haven't seen him come in yet. Talk to me about interest rates. I mean, interest rates kind of dipped in the last week. Yeah, man, I'll tell you, probably the last five, six, seven days, uh, and I think most of it is revolving around the uh, issues with Italy. Okay, so Italy is, is Italy th thinking about leaving the eurozone. It's a this is uh, yeah. Cassie loves our <laughs> Wisconsin beer. Uh oh, but this is a international. Uh, market, okay, so or, or what do you mean by that? Economy, oh, okay, sorry. okay, a global gotcha. economy. Okay, sorry. Um, so Italy is the third largest country in the region over there in Europe. They're thinking about leaving. Obviously, that is going to create some instability. Um, so when it, whenever stuff like this happens, investors get a little nervous with their money. They want to look for safety, uh, and they want to look into markets like the U.S. that have more stability, obviously, than Europe. Um, yeah, Slocum says it left the World Cup. But uh, <laughs> so whenever they look for that, so so let's say money in Russia, money in China, money in other areas of the world are going to look for safe havens, mm -hmm. right? Because they're not sure. Investors hate uh, uneasiness. They hate uncertainty. Sure. sure, That is when things really go haywire. They pull their money out um, when, when they feel like where they are putting it? Where are they putting it in that situation? So, so safe havens would be bonds. Okay, yep. and that's why you see when when bonds get bought, okay, uh, high demand 
tends to, to drive the price up, right? Sure. Now, price and yield are an inverse relationship. So when price goes up, the yield or the rate of return goes down. Okay. okay? So that's why you see these mortgage rates on 30-year mortgage rates going down um, because of that inverse relationship. So right now, uh, interest rates on 30-year pulling back to 4.5, 4.49. So it goes back to what you've talked about previously, which is it's almost like the good news of the bad news is interest rates are going down. Right. Right, so if we have nothing but good news, then obviously the economy's doing well and interest rates are probably gonna creep up. Once we have some bad news, negative news, negative news, then that's gonna bring rates down because that makes things safer, okay? Because obviously you're, you're gonna be pumping money into the economy. So right. um, that's, that's what's going on right now. And it, it, everybody in this business, it's, it's a welcome thing. Um, you know, we, in December we were at 4% on a 30 year fixed. Now we've, we've Got close to five percent a couple of few weeks ago, and now we're we're back down to four and a half. So, and we're, are we going to see what you're reading? Are we going to see this fluctuation as we go throughout the year? This this kind of is it, it's going to ebb and flow with the news, right? Yeah, I think I think you've always got these uh, weird isolated events that come in, um, kind of like Brexit. You know, a couple oh, years absolutely. ago, absolutely. Obviously, the Trump election that was a huge uh, unknown, right? Right. That kind of shook the market. So you have these things that come in and and create these waves, because uh, obviously nothing moves in a straight line. If you've watched any stocks, we're going to talk about some stocks later. But uh, if you watch the stock, the price, it, nothing moves in a straight line. So this, it's all you're seeing. Well, it's interesting. You know, I I was telling you as we were getting ready. You know, I read that stat that showed that the S and P five hundred had more moves in the first three months of this year. More one percent moves. Well, in other words, the S and P index moved by more than one percent in a day than we had in any year since two thousand nine. So, in other words, a three month period had more than any of these years. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think you're talking about the the scale of the move, right? Yeah, which is yeah one percent, one percent on so, a daily move. And now, and, I, and I'll just throw in there uh, kind of another idea is that obviously the S and P and the, and the Dow Jones are at a level they've never been at, so it's easier to move one percent now. Yeah, that's true. Than it is. In years past. Mari but, Davis, but big still. songwriter up in Nashville, is on the blower. How are you? But hey, still, a lot of, still a lot of movement in the market up and down, which is interesting. Um, Absolutely. Big moves in the Dow and the S&P. So, uh, hey, I, you know, I mean, this thing is, uh, you know, we'll digress just a little bit before we get to the stocks. But, I mean, this is an interesting market. And if you're always, one of the biggest things that I, 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 I see from a lot of people is, they're always waiting, right? They're waiting. They're scared to enter the market, whether it be the stock market, their 401k or whatever. But if you're, if you're trying to time that, you're never going to time it because I can't tell you how many people I've heard for the last three years say, well, it's probably going to go down, so I'm not going to jump in. Man, I'm telling you. And they miss the biggest yeah, run. And, and see, I, and I'm, I'm way more of a, uh, a risk taker, okay? Um, and Richard Osborne jumped in here, a good friend of mine, uh, back in high school. We had had a lot of fun together. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, Did you really? But, uh, but look, I'm, I'm a little more of a risk taker. So I would love to see five, ten percent a month, you know, or even more. You know, yeah. I'd, I'd love to take chances, trade options, buy stocks, get in and out. But people have always told me the real way to build wealth is to buy and hold. And if you go back and look 10, 15, 20 years ago, look at the levels that the market was at, look at the levels the market's at now, you know, over time, you're going to do better off uh, not, not timing the market. Oh, right? sure. Sure, there's no right? time. You're not going to time the market. So there's not going to be this aha moment that says, oh, I should get in right now. Or I can't I agree with you more. right now. You just got to get in. If the market goes down, what do you do? Dollar cost average. I, I I did it today, didn't I? I mean, I was I was in here and bought another share of uh, Royal Caribbean using, uh, uh, what's my app? Robin Hood. Man, Royal Caribbean is one we're going to talk about, but but that's that's what you do when you know if you feel like you got in at a bad time, then 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 get, hold some money out. If you're sitting on five thousand, don't just plow all of mm -hmm. it into the market right now. Uh, you know, work your way into it, but getting into it is better than waiting, right? Absolutely, and and if you're timing it, I mean. If you're always worried about falling, you're always worried. Oh well, I'm I'm I always miss. Well, you will always miss 100 percent of the time if you're always going to be worried about missing. Yeah, right. Because you missed out on these runs that were have been tremendous runs. Yeah, tremendous runs. Some, I mean, you have some big stocks that have really moved. I mean, conservative conservative funds that were making. I mean, conservative that were making traditionally, you know, eight percent a year that made 30 percent last year. 
And now, granted, we're coming out of a time in 2008 where uh, we had a, a, almost a meltdown, a financial crisis, right? So we're 10 years from that. So obviously, there's probably going to be some pretty good gains in those 10 years. Now, the next 10 years might be flat, but I'm telling you, between dividends and, and other things hey, in the market, you could still benefit by putting that money away. Another thing I want to say is that life is always more expensive than you expect it, right? 100% of the time. Like, and, and I think, you know, we've talked before, I think there's like 40%, only 40% of Americans have more than $1,000 disposable today absolutely. cash. So saving money, putting some back in investments is always a win. Absolutely. So moving but, on. Man, I'm excited about this one. This article uh, that you found, Five Secrets. Yeah. About self-made millionaires teach their kids, huh? Yeah. Uh, Tim Sebold, which is a, he's an author. He, he just released a book. He interviewed 1,200 verified, he verified it, and they were self-made millionaires. And he cultivated, from his interviews with them, the uh, best advice that we should share with our children to, in essence, uh, set up their kids for financial success down the road. And these yeah. are the things... You know, um, Caroline Obert's here. I mean, one, one of the great, uh, she's a big educator here in town. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, you know, these are the type of things I wish that they would be teaching. You know, I'm sure she does, but a lot of these teaching personal finance to a certain degree, but also teaching about how uh, you don't win the race in one inning or, or, yeah. or one lap. Uh, and we're going to talk about it. But here's one of the, number one, he said, watch Main Street and Wall Street. And you say, my eight-year-old does not care about Wall Street. What is he talking about? Well, he's basically saying keep an eye on the big picture and the local picture. Um, so we should really be watching everything, the opportunities, because they're everywhere. And I think this is this kind of tunes into a mentality of, you know, instead of staring down at your phone all the time, you know, and, and playing on Snapchat or playing on Fortnite, you know, the sooner you get into this stuff, and I, you know, I haven't put a lot of money into this, but I, I have bought my son a few stocks. Um, I think uh, Nike, Verizon, and uh, Microsoft. But I mean, not a lot. But I just want him to have the idea. I just want him to um, start paying attention to the concepts because I wish you know that I could have done that sooner in my own life. But um, I think that's what he's talking about is 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 to, to switch gears and look at some of this stuff more broadly. Well, and, and two, he, he was talking about how we can get so used to our local area. He, you know, he said, he acknowledged, hey, read the Wall Street Journal. Read about what people in foreign lands, I mean, imagine back in the older days, I guess you'd say, when before communication got so easy. Man, it was fascinating to learn, like, oh, man. about far off places and what they're doing, right? And so we really got to not only find opportunity Maybe it could be you went to Costa Rica. I, I, I've talked to entrepreneurs all over that, that went to somewhere like Costa Rica and found a coffee farm there, a local coffee farmer. Well, then they, it starts spawning in their head. How can I then turn that into a business to import it back to the United States and figure a business out of that? But also not to forget that local farmer, right, that you could turn that product in. Because I, you know, and I think we talk about how does that uh, work with our children? I think it's really just saying, hey, get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, and learn a little bit more around that that's around you, that's out there. You know, and you, you telling that story made me think of uh, I was reading a, a book by Phil Knight Shoe Dog, the, yeah, uh, the Nike starter of Nike, um, founder of Nike. And this was back in the early '70s, I think, when he did this. But he took a tri trip to China, and it's amazing if you read that book to understand how uh, disconnected the world was at that point. Like you yeah. can do stuff out over there. And then you, you could tell them stories and do what, fabricate all kinds of things, and they will never be able to, they don't figure it out for months. Right, 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 right. So he comes back here, and then he tells everybody else a different story over here. And, and he was building, um, you know, the connections and the relationships, and it's just amazing how, how disconnected things were. But yet they came together, and he was one of the yeah. richest. Uh, yeah, now it's a tremendous success, right? He owns right? the University of Oregon. Yeah. Uh, all right, next one was uh, avoid microwave avoid, thinking. Avoid microwave thinking. Man, yeah, so that's like thinking that things are going to happen immediately. Instant gratification. You know, we just talked about investing. We just talked about putting a little bit, and we've talked about it before, about putting a little bit away every week, uh, 50, 100 bucks, just socking that stuff away. Because um, you know, I am noticing. I mean, I'm, I have an 8-year-old. you got a, a teenager and then one in college. And you know that whole generation from that whole 
age range, everything's about now. Yeah. They don't have any patience. And, and they're good kids. Yeah. It just Their patience is not what it was. Yeah. Because they used to and, having everything. And, you know, even, even when we grew up, you know, it, things started to get glamorized and, uh, you know, uh, successful, rich, successful people. And it's like you think that that just happens, right, yeah. overnight. And I think that's what the microwave thinking is, instant gratification. Um, you know, one book I think of is Darren Hardy, The Compound Effect. Yep, I've it's read that. It's just how to... How to you know in in make things happen and even overnight successes if you ask them they're like man I've been doing this for years I've been grinding and plugging away for years this is not an overnight success and it's boring yeah I mean let's be real I mean you have some flashy people you know you have them in in probably your business where I'm speaking to you guys uh, they I know he has it in his where you have some people that have some short term oh man they're killing it man they're on every billboard they're on everything but they're going broke because they're spending every ounce of their money trying yeah. to look one way and not actually having true success to the person, to the tortoise rather than the hare. The tortoise, slow and steady. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to make it. Slow and steady and consistent, right? We're doing little things over time, doing little things every day, consistently over time, and then eventually it blows up and it looks like, hey, look what happened to this guy. Well, and you take it for, you know, and you know from our story from our business, you know, when Mark Carlisle last year, my business partner, gets rocked, I mean, he rocked us to the core as a business when he gets diagnosed with a brain tumor and basically told, we're told he's not because he's he's completely out of it, but he's going to be dead, right, at that point. You're going, what in the world? But thank the Lord that I listened to some good people that said, build a solid foundation, you'll be all right. Yeah. Right. And so we had the financial wherewithal because we had built a solid foundation. Nothing we did necessarily, but we could withstand those blows. Yeah. Right. We could bring bring on extra staff if we had to do that. Thank God he's good. But the question is, are we in our personal lives? Right. Because a lot of times we also have it where we're not in our personal lives building that same foundation. Yeah, and it comes back in the business, yeah. and it comes back to living on a budget, saving money. Uh, <laughs> of course, Slocum says yeah. on every billboard, "Going broke." That would not be you, Slocum, but it is for a lot of people. Yeah, and it's preparing for these unexpected things. I mean, because they're going to happen. Life's going to surprise you, and and you need to be ready. Uh, next one I thought was interesting: play sports, um, and not just any sport. And they right? highlighted golf and tennis. Why is that? I think because uh, you know these are sports that you can play later in life, and very common golf especially I, I don't know much about tennis haven't played that much but <laughs> golf especially a lot of business is done on the golf course i've always heard that you know you've seen it um for what it's worth you saw obama do it a lot trump's doing it a lot and that's at a very high level but why is it they're out there they've trapped these people out there yeah you, yeah you, 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 you're you, not going anywhere right and you have their undivided attention for usually four hours is, is how long it t takes to play around a golf um, so, and they said, you know, this could come with some criticism because yeah, this is a, a kind of a, a rich, powerful sport, right? Seems like it for, for the more wealthy, but it's true. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is true. Slocum wants us to mention his competition, I think, but we will, <laughs> we'll digress. So that was one. Uh, and even exposing the kids to sports, uh, it develops discipline, um, cooperation, communication skills. Uh, you know, so it teaches you a lot of things. It does. And the golf and tennis analogy, well, let's just put it this way. You can play tennis. Uh, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's a rich man's game necessarily. I mean, you can get a tennis racket. I mean, you got all these things. But the golf I get, I mean, I don't play any longer. You know, you used to be really good and um, don't play anymore because it just, for me, it's just not worth the financial and the time. But what I can tell you is just being around those circles, right? I mean, we, one thing we do is I think a lot of folks get jealous of successful people and they want to point at the people at the country club or wherever, but you really should want your kids to hang around because most, most successful people got there the right way. Yeah, they got there the right way and they're making decisions differently. Um, and by that, I mean, you, you know, it's just uh, a lot more, you know, parental involvement, uh, a lot more uh, different types of businesses, different types of business leaders, um, things like that. And those are the kind of people that, you want to talk to and learn from and competitive right? people. I mean, you know, you, you you know, I want people that are risk takers, right? Because life's about taking a risk. I mean, you know, Steve Harvey talks about it all the time. I know folks are going to laugh. I mean, Slocum's probably going to laugh because I'm sitting here talking about Steve Harvey. But he talks about jumping. You know, you got to take that jump at some point because mm -hmm. it ain't living if you if you don't jump. Yeah, exactly. Right? And I love what he says about jumping. He goes, if you think that parachute's going to catch you on the first jump, 
He goes, you're about halfway down going, what have I done? Right. Right? But that's because yeah. you're risk But you got to put yourself out there. Uh, Man, number four. Yep. Write and right, get that vision and write. Write down your vision, man. I've had Absolutely. coaches before tell me that uh, if it's not written down, it doesn't matter. Have like, you ever done? See, I always thought this was kind of cheesy, but I, I know it's not because I think it works. But I think some of the people selling me on it were cheesy. Yeah. But have you ever done a vision board? I've oh. not done a vision board. I have written down a vision before, and uh, I think it's interesting to have to have kids do this and. Um, I thought it was interesting what he said about it. Kids write a letter to a friend from their future self and get them to write about what they've accomplished in life. Right. He's, is that, that's, a diff, that's a very deep, different opinion. That, so in other words, what he's saying is get your children to write a letter to a friend, a future friend, it's as like, their future self, yeah. because you want to see where they're coming from. What, because see, I think a lot of it is, as adults, we are very materialistic in some ways. What he was talking about is the emotional what emotionally drives that child mm -hmm. will come out, yeah. and uh, it'll be very interesting. Yeah, and I think the idea about with that is to uh, to put on paper what you think you can achieve a year, two years or so down in the future, and then you'll work towards that. And then when you do it again in a year or two, you've already done these things. You're like, wow, man, it's empowering. See, man, I I'd never gone through this exercise, and now here I am. Achieving things I didn't didn't expect, and to. I think too one of the big things that I I found with children is that their brain will expand. I mean, they man, they can absorb all this stuff. But we want to because we get so busy and stuff, we don't think that they're ready for this kind of thing. But they really are, and uh, that's why you see some kids just very driven. Uh, your daughter very driven at a oh, yeah. very early age to whatever she was doing. Absolutely. She was all in. Absolutely, I mean, she was going to be a figure skater one time, and yeah. She got real in real life. We live in Alabama. Yeah, right. I mean, right. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But she she has really, uh, really been driven for a while and and very focused on what she wants to do. And that's a great example. But but one of the things, but the and, earlier and this the is, better. You, you know, her mother and you have done an excellent job of not because her dreams are not yours. Right. I mean, you'd be a terrible actor. Let's just be real, right? Right. I mean, right. But she's really good. Yeah. So y'all have embraced it. And said, we'll support you 100%, but also let her visions come out. Because one of the things he was talking about was, you know, this next one about remembering to laugh. And the reason that you want to remember to laugh is that we, you see this with baseball families. Oh, not baseball families, baseball kids. It's so serious. We got to go, go, go. We don't laugh about funny things happening. And so their creativity can't come out. Yeah, and it, it, it inspires creativity, but it also allows you to relax. It also allows you to be a little more humble, right? Because sure. The ability to laugh at yourself and say, you know what, man, I'm, I mean, this is not that important in the grand scheme. <sighs> and, uh, you know, just laugh at yourself, laugh at others, enjoy yourself. Well, you right? know, he, he talks about the journey of success, right? Teaching the kid. If any of y'all have been on the road to Hana, which is this long, probably like 74 hairpin turns around the island of Maui. And... It is really the uh, most beautiful drive, but it's also harrowing, if you will, right? And you don't go very fast, which is odd in this society. And everybody you talk to before you do it talks about it's the journey to get there. When you get to Hana, Hana kind of sucks, right? It's just a little town that doesn't have much. Yeah. That's why it's called the road to Hana. Yeah. And it's that journey to success that we want to teach the kids. Because right now, I watch my eight-year-old all the time wanting to get to Hana. Exactly. And right. That's that microwave thinking. That is. Yeah. And so it all pulls back together. And so. And it is a journey. And if you're not putting in work, if it's not tough at times, and that's what people don't want to do. They don't want to admit the, the tough parts. They don't want to deal with the tough parts. But if it's not tough, it's, the ending is not going to be great. Well, you know, and you talk about this, about mind shift of teaching the kids. One thing I, I shared with Julia this week was was a one of my good friends uh, in South Carolina, Blake Sloan, a realtor out there, talked about it on a Facebook Live he had. And he was talking about, you remember, we, you and I were talking about, you know, uh, change your story. Yeah. You know, when I'm having a bad day, I'm letting someone else affect me. And his big advice was change your story. In other words, you're letting the story be dictated by everybody else. Yeah. Change that story. Yeah, it's and just, it totally changes yeah, my it's mindset. That it's that negative thinking that you're allowing to take precedent over Absolutely. reality. I mean, things really aren't that bad, but we do kind of... Uh, uh, go to the extreme with the negativity, right? We allow that. We allow ourselves to believe that at times. Absolutely. So moving on, what we got here? All right, man, listen, we have uh, 
I found an article on a couple of uh, the top two cash back credit cards. Number one was Chase Freedom. There's a $150 sign up bonus plus 5% cash back wow. on multiple categories that they rotate quarterly. Okay, good. And then 1% on all other uh, purchases. So the Chase Freedom, number one cash back card. Number two was City Double Cash, 2% on everything. So if you're looking for a top cash back credit card, that's what you want. Another uh, headline that I read today Trump does not own a Mercedes, I'm pretty sure. Because he's trying to get rid of them. Ah, what? He's trying Do to tell. Keep, he's trying to keep these uh, luxury German imports uh, out of America, and I don't know if he's uh, he's putting on some tax or tariffs. But but the article I was reading said that you know he he doesn't want to see them on Fifth Avenue anymore. Well, it's interesting to see if if what Trump's doing is is part of this negotiation with China, and and you know what's really funny is one thing Trump has taught me is if you look at the totality of negotiation in this world economy, is that something he's doing in Italy may affect, may in essence be a negotiation with China that affects military doings with North Korea. Yeah. And, and yeah. that in, the, in That's some ways... the deal, right? It is. And, and whether you love them or hate them, if there was an error, you know, I believe that there's somebody's strength, right, playing to their strengths... We're, this is quite frankly one of the strengths that I think he does bring, and really his team does uh, to the table. Mm -hmm. Man, I think it's very interesting. Uh, so here's what I want to want to bring up now. Next, moving on to stocks. Okay, so the the Dow I think is up to around twenty four thousand or so, which is awesome. Um, so <laughs> so funny. Slocum, yeah, they they are, yeah, probably, or maybe he's counting on most Americans. That's say. Right. To not know that, oh, was, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're made. I mean, the the M. What is it? The uh, the SUV. Yeah, is here here in Tuscaloosa, right outside. So, man, it's some stocks that have been moving. Like Facebook, I know Facebook uh, is up seven percent year to date. They had some problems, I think, with some some. The fact they're up is amazing. Some information leaking yeah. or something like yep. that. They had some problems there. I knew that was an opportunity to buy when it pulled back like that. I mean, they're just too strong. They're too big. Um, they, they've they've got. I bet so our good much friend Harvey did. Yes, but man, I tell you, Netflix, 75% year-to-date. Yeah. Up 75%. Hey, hold on. What about, you didn't put WWE. If y'all go back to about week, I don't know, week four, stock pick of the week, WWE, WWE. you'd have made a lot of money. Man, Netflix is just really taking over the business. The stuff they're doing is amazing. Uh, they've got their own content. They're, they're raising fees. Um, they, they've changed from, you know, the DVD rentals, right? Yep. to everything online. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing to watch, too, with, with Netflix is it's going to be real interesting as, as the whole world gets politicized, if you will. Watch them keep their mouth shut, right? They're learning from ABC, NBC, uh, all these guys. to Just keep your mouth shut on politics. Keep your head down, and let's roll. Now, I know Obama signed up for whatever he did, but that's okay. They'll, they'll have a counter to that, but they'll stay politically neutral And because you're seeing what ESPN is imploding, right? They're, I mean, they're spending millions on anchors and they're not getting results, and that's why they lost WWE and uh, NBC Universal lost WWE, and then Fox signed them. I mean, so uh, you know, we talked about earlier about finding other stuff out there. Think about what, what was out there. Everybody wants to talk about the NFL, NBA, all this fancy stuff, but who's drawing in ratings almost more than any of them other than the NFL is WWE. Right, but I have to say that Game Seven Warriors was like the number two rated show ever, and Game yeah. One of the Finals is tonight. I just got to hey. put in there. Golden State, the land, Cleveland, Man. Golden State, Round Four. Hey, we got a legend on here, Frank Klesitz. I think he's coming to us from Europe. If I'm thinking right, he's the smartest guy with viral marketing, smartest guy in video marketing. In the country, it's Frank Klesitz. I mean, truly, I do think that much of Frank. And uh, that's awesome. It's V Y R A L. If anybody's watching, but Frank, are you in? If you're still here, are you in Europe? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Tyler Young is on. Good to see you. Uh, a couple other things I want to talk about. Banks are kind of down to flat, um, except for Visa credit card holder up 14 percent year to date. Airlines are down big uh, time, man. Uh, and I want to talk about the cruise lines, right? Carnival Cruise, you, you mentioned Royal Caribbean, which yep, is one of our favorites. 
uh, Carnival, man, has been in the news lately. Just the terrible. Poop, the poop cruise. The poop cruise. They had uh, the first one. The Walmart uh, of the Seas, was, as I call it. A, a family fight on there. And then they had a water leak. Uh, recently, they had a, a, water uh, leak. a passenger overboard. And then they had two day, a two-day delay in Tampa. They had a, a cruise ship that was delayed for two yeah. days. The, the, but the they, people were still plowing passengers on. Passengers were at port for two days. Man, I tell you, that's that seems to be a tough in the headlines. Tyler, how are you? Microsoft been up fifteen percent lately. That's one of my son's favorite because of the Xbox and Fortnite. It's amazing, isn't it? Fortnite. I mean, jeez, I mean, Louise. Listen, here's another thing. If you just want to talk to your kids about stocks, just to get them interested, they might give you some ideas well, on companies they like. So, uh, you know, well, just talk. Like Microsoft. Well, let's talk about. There's. I, I heard somebody say Warren Buffett is a lot like a kid, right? What are kids going to talk about? Stuff that they use. Stuff they use and they, they buy. know. Yeah. They don't go outside the box. Yeah. They go to Pizza Hut. Well, guess what Warren Buffett they, did? He bought Pizza Hut. Yeah. They don't go looking for a, a pharmaceutical company that they do not understand at all. Me either, Tyler. You know, one of the big things, one of the big uh, underlying facts here is buy what you understand. Right? Absolutely. If, if my son is playing Fortnite and he loves Xbox, he understands it. He feels like... You know, he, he knows the community. He sees that there's the, the interaction is up. So he understands it, right? Well, and I, I think, too, is we, we, the reason we talk about stocks so much and things like that is we, we highly encourage everybody in order. I know it's the real estate happy hour, but it plays into our overall finances and the ability to buy a house and also to view the, the real estate as an investment. I think one of the best ways you can do that is, like I mentioned earlier, on the Robinhood app, and I'll put a link down below after we get off here. And Robinhood's a free trading. They don't charge you a single commission, and you can put $1,000 in there and just play because they're not charging commission. They're making money off idiots trading on margin. If anybody trades on margin, I'm sorry. Uh, you didn't borrowing, mean to offend you. Didn't mean to offend you. May not be that means idea. they're borrowing money to play with. So we're only talking about money you have to lose. You won't lose, I promise you, not in this economy, unless you're going really crazy. And if you'll stick to the stuff you know, you're not going to lose money. I mean, you might lose in the near term, but you'll learn how to yeah. do things like we talked about earlier about dollar cost averaging down. I mean, we talk about Royal Caribbean. I think my average cost right now is around $119. The, the, the uh, cruise line is being traded right now at, what, 105 roughly? And so every time uh, it goes down, I'm buying another share or two, right? So I'm bringing that average down so that imagine when it gets back Once to 140 back, yeah. We've made a lot of money. Yeah. And so, uh, really, Robinhood free app, uh, I can't say enough about it. Uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, a couple, a couple of them that I noticed. Tesla's down 8% year-to-date. Uh, Disney is down 9% year-to-date. A couple of interesting ones. Amazon, freaking unbelievable company, up 38% to like $1,600 a change. share. I remember a few years ago when they were $300 a share. I and remember they, thinking it can't. I mean, really they high. are just killing it. Just... I mean, it, well, and you know, one of the things too is you got uh, uh, certain things like mutual funds, uh, TRBCX, which is a T Rowe Price blue chip fund. If you if you don't feel comfortable buying this, buy the bucket or buy the ETF. Buy a let's say you're you're real big into the tech sector, right? Or right, go buy. It. Matter of fact, this is funny. I was going to say it for next week, but there is an ETF now called MAGA. This is one that that Slocum will get on, right? Make America Great Again. What they did was they created the fund, the ETF. It's not a fund. It's, yeah. a, it's an index. Tracking the geo, they looked at where these... And I bet you Boeing's in there. I guarantee you. Where the, what do you call those people that support the people, the, the lobbyists, the, uh, they create those packs. Yeah. Where were they putting their investment money? Yeah. And that's who this, this ETF follows. If anybody doesn't know what an ETF, it's an exchange-traded fund that tracks a certain index. So they, in other words, they buy the certain funds that would track and get a similar return as, say, the S&P 500. Yeah, like, a, like an auto ETF would own GM, Ford, Tesla. All of them. They would own cars. Uh, so that's the same type of thing. But, so, because, uh, like, housing, right? Housing's done this in terms of stocks, right? And that part of that's our new home starts have been down because uh, it's kind of hard. But you could buy a REIT that may actually be a pretty good bet. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's going to have some exposure to residential and commercial. Yeah, and now we are not technically allowed to give any uh, financial investment advice, but we're just throwing this information out there. I'm telling you what we do. It's stuff that you know uh, appeals to us uh, that we find interesting. 
we may know a little bit more about it than the average person. So we're just sharing a little, uh, yeah, little yeah, information. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we don't. Yeah. But if you want to buy a house, yep. we're going to call Collier, purchase, yeah, refinance absolutely. for your loan you're calling me. Um, absolutely. But I tell you, it's going to be an interesting, uh, it, it, one last thing on stock. It's going to be an interesting rest of the year. I mean, we're going to see this as we go through, especially with the uncertainty in, in Korea. Uh, well, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been paying attention as much this year as I usually do, but it was interesting to see that the banks and the airlines are down. It's interesting to see whole sectors that are down. And then while I was doing some research, I saw a couple of pharmaceutical companies, those things jump around all the time. They were up like 75% today. Yeah. That's, What's it, you know what's really interesting, interesting? If anybody doesn't know, I mean, have you seen the sheer number of generic drugs that since Trump's took office? I mean, the, the number of approvals. And what's interesting about that is, and why it's important, is the cost of it's one little piece that's going to drive some uh, and be a great benefit to a lot of people. Drive some healthcare. Yeah, because what was happening was or, or in the Obama cost. prescription costs is that they were again the special interests were getting involved and in allowing these big pharmaceutical companies to control even after their patent uh, was up. And so it'll be interesting as we move forward. But uh, anybody got any uh, real estate related fun topics or anything they want to talk about? Uh, yeah, just let us know. Mari D was asking, Mari Davis was asking about the Yacht Rock. It was on earlier. I mean, we, yeah. we kind of missed it. Uh, yeah, we did miss it a little bit. There's a big, good band coming. Yacht Rock. What is it? Yacht, Yacht Rock, Rock Review, I think. Yeah, coming to Birmingham, but they'll be up in Nashville soon, too. So uh, Yeah, so we can turn it back up. Oh, absolutely. And did you back into Benny and the Jets for our closing. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I tell you, uh, who is that? Weezer? You know Weezer? The band Weezer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, punk rock. They just did a cover of Africa by Toto. Phenomenal. Yeah? Phenomenal. Mari D, if you're still here, did you see that? Weezer doing Africa. Really good. But you, guys... I don't, I don't, I, you know what? I mean, come on, this is Elton John, right? Yeah. Eh, you know, it, it depends. On, is he Yacht Rock, though? Oh, of course. I mean, some of it is. Everywhere, Fleetwood no, I'll Mac. I give you Fleetwood Mac. Well, you guys uh, have a great week. Join us uh, next Thursday. We'll be uh, here, tune same in. place. And uh, obviously, if you if you need any help with real estate or mortgage, reach out to us. Uh, call your Schwecker with the Mega Agent Real Estate Team. I'm David Arnett with Mortgage Bank, and uh, we'd be happy to help you. Or if you just want us to talk about something else, leave that in the comments, and and we'll address it next week. But y'all have a great weekend. All right, see you next week. Enjoy same time, same place. NBA see you then. Finals. NBA Finals. Tonight. Is that a game? Yeah. All right. Go, go Golden State because I can't let LeBron win. <laughs> <laughs>